miles on a Saturday. I'm headed down to the lake, just my buddy and me. Got my boat hooked up to my Chevy truck. I'm running high on luck, I ain't ever coming down. Time to back the boat down the ramp again. Do everything we can to come back in with a wind sack. That's a life of a fisherman you wouldn't understand. Something you can't fill on dry land. You gotta get your arms way up in a cat. And set the hook on small mouth bass and then you'll understand. Gotta get your hands on a Shimano reef And a jean loom that's right up at you like what you feel Step on a deck and give it a whirl Hello and welcome to my world Sorry about the uh, delay there. Uh, for some reason, my um, I my system likes to freeze up right when we get ready to go live. But welcome to another episode of On Another Line. My name is Tyler Waller. And I'm Josh Bryant. Guys, we got a lot of information coming to you guys. It's going to be one of the most exciting videos that we've seen. Let me mute this here. 
Uh, give me a second, share this out. If you don't care to go out there and, and share that on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you're seeing this at, share this thing out there. I'd appreciate it. Um, Still not showing live on here. Oh. And we're live. Okay, now we are. Here we go. Let me uh, shut off my sound here. Hey, hey, here we go. See, all right. So, again, I'm going to share some stuff out here, guys, and uh, we're going to get going. And yeah. Like so we ain't, we ain't, we act like we ain't never doing it again. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're uh, glad to be back. Uh, we, you know, we missed us. Yeah, everybody misses us, right? Yeah, that's right. No, just kidding. And uh, we've got some uh, cool little things to talk about here. We got some stuff that's going to be coming up at iCast. The new trolley motor that's coming out from Lawrence. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, they have been giving little hints of what it is. And uh, there is uh, quite other few things coming out. Same exact thing and from last time. <laughs> we went dark in here. Yeah. Can you see, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, Lee, man. I tell you what, <laughs> the exact same thing happened last time. And then, uh, we so we got the eye cast, and then Wiles will be coming with that. And then also, we're going to have um, some updates from Tyler. He uh, fished a BFL up at uh, Lake St. Clair. In the Michigan division, uh, done pretty good. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can, I think that it's, uh, you know, went well. Well, I'll, I'll explain what all happened there. And Kyle and I went up last. Uh, I spent the night at his house on Wednesday. We drove up two thirty in the morning on Thursday morning. Fished all day Thursday, Friday. Uh, Turn was Saturday. Drove home Sunday to his or from his house home on Saturday or on Sunday. So. Uh, it was a really cool experience. I'll talk to you more about that, guys. Again, I'm sharing this thing out. Hopefully, you guys are doing the same, trying to get as many people as possible. we got a lot of cool stuff coming to you guys today. Um, and the reason that is um, kind of different is the fact that we're going to start talking about, hey, Josh Cade, what's up, buddy? He says, watch from New Jersey. What's up? He, Pretty uh, sure he's an Ohio boy, and yeah. he's in New Jersey. He's at uh, work supper. I got you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, so, guys, uh, I am on um, – YouTube as well here on this thing right here, trying to make sure that uh, live chat is available. Hey, Misty Sires is watching. Hey, Misty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shoo. Yeah, so um, we're trying to get everything going on here. Every time we do this, guys, it, it, it works perfect, and all of a sudden, boop. Yep. Yeah, uh, Misty, if you don't care, will you watch for comments on YouTube? Because uh, for some reason... It is not showing me live comments. So um, hopefully we can do that um, and get everything going. Maybe it's because I'm not live. Hey, now we're live. All right. All right. So, guys, uh, the very first thing I want to talk about is um, if you missed last uh, the episode two weeks ago, that was when we had uh, Lance Carpenter, the guy who sings our uh, song that's on this intro that you're about to see in just a second. Um, but... One thing about it is that um, you know it was a cool experience seeing him. Um, I have started a thing on on YouTube called the Back to the Basics series. Um, so those of you guys out there that are new to bass fishing or fishing in general, what I want you to do throughout this show is so I've put out two Back to the Basics videos over the past couple. Well, I guess it's been over a year now, and I'm going to start hitting it hard. Um, one of them was how to tie a drop shot, which is something that a lot of people wouldn't know how to do if they just got into bass fishing. The other one is I just released yesterday, which is how to Texas rig a bait. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about uh, back to the basics or ba basics of bass fishing or fishing in general. Um, what I want you guys to do if you guys are just new to fishing or you, you know, you're just checking out our channel or, or there's something you want to learn, drop it in the comments either on YouTube or on Facebook what you would like to or maybe you know what – Maybe you're a pro. Let's say that you're out there, you're fishing a pro circuit or whatever. What I want you to do is think of a topic that you think somebody that's just getting into the bass fishing world may be leery about, or maybe they don't understand, or maybe they don't. Maybe it'd be a good technique for somebody to learn. So I done a basics of fishing a topwater uh, bait there the other day. Five of the most popular topwater baits. I think I've done maybe four buzz bait, um, spook, popper. I've uh, done a few of them there. So. Um, those that's taken off pretty good i've had almost 600 views on the how to rig a texas rig since yesterday which is pretty phenomenal so i'm glad about that so if you guys uh again if you're just now joining us what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about stuff that i've been doing research on the past couple of days and that's going to be icast icast is the biggest fishing show on the planet it's three days um down in orlando huge man i am talking monstrosity of an event 
Uh, this is where all the cool products for 2019 and 20 are released. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, last year is when the uh, – actually, the Crowder DC was, was uh, announced before yeah, ICAST. Before. Um, but over there, if Josh would get it in just a second, there's uh, some – right underneath that bag of hats, there's a uh, thing of uh, Power Pro Super Slick V2, which was a best of show winner for the ICAST 2018. But – so I found I found something on Bassmaster's website that we're going to go through. I've not seen all these guys, so I figured this would be an opportunity for us to, to work on it. Um, and here's the um, the best of line class last year. This is Power, uh, Power Pro. Uh, I think it's called Super 8 Slick. I just call it Super Slick V2. Um, this is an 8-carrier braid. And, again, if you, guys, if you guys want to have some more information about what the different braid, carrier braids are, We've done a whole entire live video on it last year about this time. Just search uh, on here on YouTube or on Google, it's, or I'm sorry, on Facebook, either one. Um, but the difference between a 4-carrier and 8-carrier braid is that an 8-carrier braid is a lot smoother, um, and it has 8 strands of fiber as opposed to the 4-carrier, which only has 4. But, Josh, we are headed into ICAST 2019, yes. and I am super excited. I am bummed out to the max that I am not there. I'm not going to be there. It's just too expensive for me to travel all the way to Orlando. Um, and Misty and I went down a couple years ago. Super, it's an experience, guys. If you've never been there, you need to go try to get there. Uh, I've been trying to talk to Josh a little bit about it. But we found this, um, This, I guess you would call it the, um, uh, it's a teaser from Bassmaster. It's a lot of different stuff. These are the stuff that's been released up until this point. Uh, that you're going to see a lot more of these things, um, and you know you're going to see these as you go on. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up. And again, uh, one thing I do want to mention is there's going to be an ad every so often that we got to click away from. So I apologize for that. But without further ado, let's go through some baits that we're going to potentially see in the 2019 iCast fishing show. So let's check it out. So in the hard baits category, we'll let Josh talk about it, and then we'll go on. This here is what they're calling the Berkeley Fritz side. It's a uh, classic bait design with a legendary crankbait angler, David Fritz. It's the, uh, it's basically the same proven action that won David the Bassmaster Classic. It's a balsa. It's got a balsa action to it. So that's what this one is right here. Yep. And MSRP eight ninety nine. Yeah. So we're gonna. So it's we're gonna try to keep this thing going. There's like 178 photos on here, so we'll just uh, talk a little bit about booyah. it. We'll Covert spinner bait. Um, it's going to obviously be from three eighths, half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce sizes, uh, eight ninety nine to nine ninety nine. The uh, booyah three inch. They're calling this one the prank. It's basically like a pop popper. It does have a little lip on it there. They don't have a give. Uh, it says it weighs half ounce, measures around three inches. So these guys, these are lures that are coming out this year. Yeah, they'll be released at the 2019, is a, which is next week's ICAST. A Chippewa DD blade, they are calling it. It's uh, 2.4 inches long, weighs 0.69 ounces, MSRP, $17. Wow. That's a cool little bait, though. Yeah. So here's your uh, Duo Realist. It's a drag metal cast, SSZ. It's a super slim version of the popular drag metal cast series. Um, it comes in three-quarter, one-ounce inch and uh, one and three ounce and two and one ounce models, seven forty nine to eight ninety nine. So most of these on here, I think, are pretty much under, well. I'll say that now is uh, most of them are under ten dollars. Um, here's one, it's a crankbait. Yeah, Dua Realis has got some high, uh, high yeah, price stuff. Yeah, Dua Realis is thirteen ninety nine. There's one, uh, the Hula Popper. Uh, everybody loves a Hula Popper, right? Nope, if I go back to where I'm at, sorry guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, my phone fell over. Uh, there's an ad. This here is the uh, 13 fishing. It's the Pathfinder, they're calling it. This one is $17.99. It's a topwater bait. Uh, here's a live target erratic shiner. It's uh, $9.99 for that one. Here's the uh, what they're calling the flutter shad. It's $9.99. Livingston uh, crankbait here. It's a DMC Junior Howler. Uh, don't give it weight. 2.1 inches long. Here's a jerk bait. It's a slow sinking jerk bait. It's a it's a Livingston, two to four foot range. Um, Mega bass frog, and um, this one here is fifteen ninety nine, three quarter ounce. 
Hey, Justin Fairchild from Ashland. What's up, buddy? Right across the river from us. Yeah, Brian, I just commented there on it, uh, you know, but I'll tell you, um, ICAST is not open to the public. You have to either be a product manufacturer, a retailer, or a distributor. Right. Um, but, you know, like, for example, the Tackle Box in South Point, Ohio, um, you know, they can get tickets if I wanted to go. You know, you have to pay for them. It's like, it's not cheap, man. It's like, it's like 100 bucks for two days or $150 for two days. I mean, it's not like, but it's pretty cool what you see there. This here is the Mega Bass Big uh, M7.5. It's a super deep run crankbait and uh, 30 bucks. So that one's a little pricey. Yeah. What the heck is this? This thing looks like uh, it. It looks it's like the jack. It looks like the jackal. Um, <laughs> sixty dollars. Yeah, it looks like, I wing. It's calling it. Was sixty I wing, bucks? Sixty dollars. That wow. one. Yeah, Mega Bass got some stupid. And then so uh, again, guys, here's those ads. So just Mega Bass them. Mega Dog, sixty dollars. Four measures eight point six inches long. So I mean, oh, uh, you're a, throwing it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. so these are big top. Are they? So the, I yeah. guess those are. The Mega Bass cool. Swimmer. This is kind of like a swimming jig here. $11.99 and $12.99. Well, underspan. Uh, it's got a number three willow blade on it. Add some flash up to it. Uh, Rapala BX Big Brat. This is a, it's a balsa, 4x4 balsa inner body with a super tough copolymer shell. Six foot diving. So this one's a six foot depth. ten ninety nine. The rip stop. There's a, uh, another... Jerking bait here, uh, eleven ninety nine. Twelve foot jerk bait. That's awesome. Uh, here's a spinning jerk bait. That's a pretty cool little collar there. Yeah. So those are just new. Those are new collars for us. So I, I saw this uh, on another post. This is a, that what you're talking about. What just was on there that Spro swim jig or that uh, looks like a spy bait. It was looks really cool. So here's another bait I was really excited about. This looks like this is a KVD two point five uh, wake bait. So this thing is, you know, especially in hot summer, you ought to be able to just crush bass with this thing. Uh, MSRP, just like anything else, seven bucks for anything Strike King. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty common. Here, Terminator Pro Jake, three ninety nine. The collars comes in Bama Crawl, Overdose, Blue Glimmer, Blue Glimmer Shad, Texas Crawl, and Choby Crawl. A Livingston Walking Boss. I don't have no thing. I'm sure that's probably about twenty bucks. Yeah. Livingston Walking Boss, another one. That's a yeah, Walking like Boss a Junior. Yeah. Uziri, uh one point five. It's seven ninety nine. Dude, five to eight foot. I love that collar, dude. That is a cool. That collar. thing is sweet. I, that's got to do. I mean, if you get on a clear river or something, just be but, chewing. Is that gonna be the the new one? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I've already found a new one. I yeah. Think. So here's a uh, five inch pencil. It's nine ninety nine. Uh, some rattling baits. I'm gonna start clicking through these. Most of these are seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine. And here's some soft baits. Alright, so we're in the soft bait category here. Okay, there you go. Big bite baits, kamikaze crawl. Kamikaze. Big almost awesome chunk of crawl. Yeah. Here's a kamikaze swimming. It's a big bite baits tour worm. Whoa, was that what was that? Was that a whole deal back there? It's like a buzz bait. You guys kinda off the screen there for you guys, but it, Looks like, I wonder if that, you get the whole bait and everything. Let's see if I can pull it over there real quick. There we go. Yeah. So, I don't know, I guess. Okay. Well, that looks cool. Uh, it seems to me like the, call me crazy, I'm a conspiracy theorist here on this, but it seems to me like they'd try to eat the blade and it would be behind the word, behind the hook. Well, they always say attacks at the head, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could be right. Could be right. Well, check out this one. Flutter Copper, Curl. Flutter Curl. I haven't seen any new baits from Colfer forever. Yeah. There's a worm. So that's the original. There's the original worm there. I guess the new collars. Uh, watermelon, purple, red. Oh, yeah, check out that thing. Six inch water dragon. That water dragon. Cool. That just has a cool name to it. <laughs> don't water I'm dragon. the water dragon. What you catch on the water dragon? Water dragon. Yeah. Pretty true axe in the house. What's up, brother? Yeah, Carl Hunt. Hey, buddy. Dual realist. Yeah. Tetra works. Bernie. Let's see here. Bernie's a flat body twin tail. Hmm. Cool looking. There's a walleye bait. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, check that out. Live, live target freestyle frog. It's ten bucks. I like that. Oh, one. ghost minnow. Yeah, it's a good ghost tail minnow. Drop oh, shot it's bait. Got to be a drop shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh it's, it's three, four, and five inches are swim baits. Well, it's a, it says drop shot bait. Oh, jeez. It's a big old drop shot. Ten bucks for that one. There you go. Ooh, that looks good, don't it? Slow roll shiner. Yeah. What all kind of colors I got that in? 
don't say. I don't know. It doesn't it say. comes in three sizes and six colors. There you go. Yeah. Ten dollar. Mega Bass Mag Draft Freestyle. Geez, select a weighted six odd or eight odd screw hook. Wow. Yeah, those are big. Those Mag Drafts are huge. Yeah. Um, Chris Aldane uses them and absolutely murders fish on. That would be a really good drop shot bait, I think. It looks like a catfish. A, yeah, it looks yeah. like a catfish. Probably set to be modeling a goby, I'd imagine, but it kind of looks like a little mud cat or something. Let's say it's designed to look like catfish fry. Oh, so. there we go. See? Yeah, see. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Stephen Chase? Chicka crawl. Chicka crawl. Hey, Stephen, what's up, buddy? John Wayne uh, Cole in the house. Worm. Check the flute worm. Flute worm? <laughs> it looks like a flute. Check out that. The, the champ bit. crawl. That's Jordan Lee, bud. Yeah. The, Jordan Lee, the champ. Champ is here. Oh, wait a minute. That's, that's not Jordan Lee. Oh, there's a champ a, minnow. I think it looks pretty cool, too. It is, uh, yeah. That's got some realistic to it, don't it? Yeah. Here's another swimmer. Swim bait. Water bug. Berkeley. Oh, there's a raging Ned. So so this is a brand new bait, man. I've been excited to see this. I figured yeah. it'd be on here. But this is a, uh, it, it's basically like the uh, the whole deal with the um, the rage bug in a Ned rig size. Um I'd love to be able to get my hands on these before the July 13th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Normally, a Ned Rig excels when it gets tough and calls a smoke profile. No longer subtles the option. Mm, it's awesome. 15 tempting collars, it says. 15, yeah. If, you get, if it, It's got to be in green pumpkin. You can fish yeah. any collar or you want, only just green pumpkin. And again, guys, this is off of straight off Bassmaster's website. If you guys want to go over there and check those out after the show, you can definitely do that. Uh, you know, it's totally I want to talk guys. about, there's an article over here, too, I want to talk about also before we All right. click off this one. X Zone, yeah. they got some. Cool, X Zone has some really cool stuff. Especially they got one. Of, um, oh, what's his name? Must have got one St. Lawrence River last year, uh, Bertram. And he had an X Zone lure, and it was like a little. It may be on here. Let's see if they got the same. Yeah, Jeff. <laughs> he was with doing you. a drop I, shot. I love the idea of the uh, Rage Bug Ned Rig too. Uh, it's a lot smaller. It's going to be an absolute killer. There but yeah, so nice there's one. a young finesse worm. Z Man T R D bugs, cool. That's like the. So uh, that's got a. That's got a. Like a sweet those beaver. are fine size. Those are two and three quarters. Those would be like for an Ed rig too. Yeah. Z Man giant turd. Giant T D R <laughs> six inch. Gee wow. Whiz. Yeah, that's crazy. The Zoom Z swim. I like now. See, I like those. Yeah, pretty sweet. Yeah. Got all those uh, cuts there in the bait. Give it a lot more vibration. And again, guys, bear with us. There's a bunch of ads reels. on here. All right, so let's see what we got for reels here. Abu Garcia, the Revo. Personally, guys, I've been trying to get uh, Green River made the top 100 lakes of Bassmaster Carl Hunt. So that, I did see the St. Lawrence River was number one. Yeah, I that's think. what I want to talk about. Um, so I've yes, been. Yes, it was the X Zone Slammer. That's right. Yes, it was. Let's, we'll pull it up to him. Yeah. What's up, Dennis he, Akers? What's he, up, buddy? Uh, he smoked him on it, man. He was. It's cool though. See, and what was cool about that is, is like his best friend was hanging out with him, and like he was second place, and was so happy that he beat him. It was unreal. Like it was just cool, you know, <laughs> just to see that. So you got to lose here. Uh, There's a 13 fishing concept, boss. The chick was number six. That's cool, Stephen. It's uh, it's got to be up there in the top. I figured it'd be in the top five. To be honest with you, that just Johnny goes to show Morris, you what kind of series sp spin reel. Johnny Morris again. So guys, I haven't heard anything about Shimano reels. I haven't. I'm. You'd think I'd be in the loop, but I'm really not. Nope, so <laughs> well, Shimano likes to keep everything hush hush. So I, I'm pretty excited to see what's going to come out from them. You're not going to see any Loomis or any any Shimano so products on there. So if you want there. the uh, Bass Pro Platinum spinning rod and the spinning reel, get out four hundred dollars and you can have it. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, I, of course I'm that's sorry. I mean you're talking three hundred. So you're talking about, I mean, that's three hundred dollars for a, a combo. Yeah, I mean, that's that's about it's about what you're going to see, uh, especially like if you think about like a Shimano Zodius is one ninety nine MSRP, and then uh, I did buy another rod and reel the other day. I'll talk about uh, my idea about that as well as a product that I just Here's picked a, up. Uh, lose Mach two rods. It's a hundred dollar rod. It says. Yeah. Thirteen fish. Thirteen fishing fuse. Thirteen fishing's got some new baits coming out that for the low Fluke price Masters of four hundred and fifty dollars. Dude, missile baits are awesome. I actually uh caught Saint a bunch Croy. of fish on a um on a Ned bomb and also a uh drop drop shop bomb down up there at uh, Saint Clair or um, yeah, Saint Clair the week. Jordan uh, Lee the Champ Series. 
So Garcia, yeah. So these are combos. Again, guys, you're that not going to see two thirty nine by the combo. Huh. So it is cheaper because it was one twenty and I think one eighty. So yeah. So you guys, you're just joining us right now. We're looking at some products that are supposedly slated to come out in ICAST, which is next week. Uh, ICAST is the yes. biggest fishing show on the planet. That's what I'm talking Dude, about. Catch a $14. monster. $14.99. Catch a monster. <laughs> That's awesome. Guys, all about fishing with, yeah. with people. You guys, if you guys missed the episode a few weeks ago where we handed out some uh, stuff going on, it was, it was awesome stuff. So the Aqua View. Let's see here. Ray Marine's coming out. Garmin. I'm gonna tell you this about the Garmin. That Panoptics is stupid nice. Oh yeah, I reckon. Like I'm telling you, like uh, Steve Stumbo and Aaron Stumbo, guy we know, I work with him. He had one. And you dude, get the opportunity to look at it up there, Saint Clair. Yeah, but like he has 360 and the Panoptics, so like it was hard to see him from where I didn't go on the boat with him, but we were just right there in the dock and he was kind of moving around. And it was really cool just seeing, like, there was some, you know, like, bluegill and stuff like that sewing around. So, it was pretty cool. Uh, so, here's a, uh, looks like a Minn Kota neutralium blade prop. Uh, let's see. Don't, let's see what the difference. It ain't available until 2020. NASA design, hydro full shape. <laughs> <laughs> Mercury outboard prop, prop propeller technology. Jeez. It's the Katana. 30% more efficiency on your battery compared to previous wow. props. Ah, uh, yeah. All That's right. crazy. So Ray Marine. Ray Marine. Siren. What is that? I don't know. It's a new oh, option for remote boat monitoring. Oh, cool. Security system. Outboards. Outboards. Well, well e maybe they come out in 115 in the e tech. They, well, they come out in a. Yep, that's all it was there. So you got some line. So here's some hyper braid, eight carrier. Yeah, it's eight carrier braid there. Yeah. Silent flip. By the way, Startron is good stuff. So I'll, <laughs> it's good I'll, stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll let's go a little slower on that one. <laughs> Silent Cortland, flip. I've never heard Seagull. of Cortland. Smackdown. $30. Strike King Tour Grade. Suffix, Suffix Advance. Fluorocarbon. Dude, so I've not. been looking at this for the past couple of days. As you guys know, you guys have heard me talking about it a lot of... A lot of things about it, um, about Sunline. I've <laughs> fallen in love with Sunline. Um, the crap is extremely expensive. I'm not yeah. going to lie to you. It is so extremely Justin Fairchild asked, uh, favorite river bait at this time of the year? Favorite river bait this time of year? You know uh, well, right now the river is about five foot up from where <laughs> it needs to be and running freaking chocolate milk. So you're going to have to have something uh, get their attention. Uh, I'd probably throw a rattling 1.5. Big old spinner bait with some willow leaf blades. Josh likes to throw a Colorado leaf uh, in a black. Actually, does really well. Black you and wouldn't yeah, you wouldn't think it, but it does. Um, you're gonna have to have something that's got some thump to it, especially like I was out on the river watching a bluegrass festival this weekend, and it was absolutely just mud. And I've seen the river very few times in my life ripping so much current as they were this past weekend. I am talking. Dude, like, if you fell out of the boat, you would be 200 yards away from your boat before they could even get the anchor pulled. It was <laughs> freaking ripping. Um, so, yeah, I would start with that. I would go with a spinnerbait, uh, 1.5 with a rattle in it. Maybe, depending on what kind of you're at, um, you might be able to get away with, uh, if you're up in a tributary where it's a little bit more clear, buzzbait, um, something that's they're going to want to, they're going to have to know that it's there. I, I like to throw a jig, too, at this time. Even in the summertime, I'll throw a jig. Um, I put a little crawl, like a uh, little trailer on it. Nothing big, just something. Um, I've done pretty good with that. That's kind of like my go-to on a river about this time of the year. Um, especially, you know, like Tyler said, we'll throw top water or something early, but most of the time we'll do that. But uh, Stephen Chase, you're right. The Lawrence Live, I think, was a flop. The, what <laughs> I've seen, um, and guys, I mean, he does great videos as uh, the guy, Russell, uh, Russell Marine Products. Go over and watch, check his YouTube out, and watch the Pan Optics and the uh, Lawrence Live head to head. Hey, Russell Marine just came out with another video. It's, that I, what yeah, was that? It was, there, that was a comparison, I think. Nah, of there was another. There was another. He's video. always launching them, but there was another video that it was something that. Oh, I think it was. It was about the the Lawrence Ghost. We're going to talk about here in just a second. Oh, the trolling yeah. motor. But uh, it, I'm telling you what, they're like it was not. I'm a Lawrence. I love Lawrence. But it Excuse was me. crazy how much better the Panoptics was on that. So, Nate went in the house. Um, Keith, your dad says he yeah. needs a 19 by 21. <laughs> so, anybody have a 19 by 21 prop out there? Uh, he found the rocks. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> Uncle Keith found out that an aluminum prop on some rocks in Somersville Lake is not the best opportunity. Yeah. Uh, turned that thing into a tin can opener in a heartbeat. <laughs> Hopefully that was at the end of the trip and not at the it beginning. It was. It was. He's like, I knew something was wrong. He said, here we went, tink, tink, tink. And he said, I knew something was wrong when I'm going to go 20 mile an hour. <laughs> The 6,000 RPM. Yeah, wah, <laughs> cranking it up. <laughs> yeah, Stephen, I, I take your word for it, man. I, I'm at the point right now where I – His drop shot hook. We were just talking about yesterday. Wow, those look cool. Yeah. Oh, those are troke cars. Yeah. Dude, I I need those hooks right there. Oh, is that a troke car also? Uh, no, it's Eagle Claw. Yeah, it's a true – yeah, troke car is made by yeah, Eagle Yeah, troke car, yeah. Yeah. Laser sharp. It's got. Uh, That's awesome. I bought some hooks. I'm not going to name the brand. It's available in July, so you can't get them now, anyways. That's right. Well, it I'm, is July. Yeah, we bought some. Normally, hooks. it's July 31st. We bought some hooks for some dead rigs that I, are not as sharp as every other hook I bought from the company, and I'm looking for another. So that might be. I'd hate to see what a thousand. So there's your uh, trailer hook. Yeah, spinnerbait hook. Wow, check out that net rig. Nate what? loves my Solix. Oh yep. yeah, I guarantee it. Guaranteed. Yeah, I would. Steven, I'm with you, buddy. Uh, I'm a hummingbird guy myself. Tyler is. I'll give you that. Um, I may be both. You never know. We thought we were going <laughs> to get. Yeah, we thought. So, I thought I had some issues with a couple batteries. Uh, not Odyssey batteries, obviously, but I had a couple other batteries in another boat. Um, one of them, and for some reason they weren't working. Uh, I thought my battery charger was going bad, so I'd done some testing on it there the other day <clears> and <throat> found out that if you guys had, I can't even remember the name of it. Um, I, I'll find it. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, a pro series or it, anyway pro, pro series something. But what was happening is I plug it in and it would charge for about thirty seconds, then it would go to ready on all the batteries. So I thought the battery charger was going bad. Um, tested some batteries, found out, and again these are not the Odyssey batteries that are running on the bass boat. These are some uh, Deca batteries actually, but they're several years old. Um, we checked them out, found out a battery that was uh, bad actually. And uh, I unplugged the fusible link from my chargers, and my charger started charging again, which was really cool because it won't charge. Oh, look at that. So yeah. strike cream's getting in the Ned Rig. Oh, now. the better Neds. Wow, look the, how long that thing is. I know. Is. That's what I was going to say. Check that out. It's uh, plenty of room for anglers. It's uh, 16, 3 16 and 8 ounce, both in green pumpkin and black. Is that tungsten? Um, I don't say. Number two. So those are two. Those are That's a big hook. Number two. Yeah. They don't, don't say. Golly, how many is? I wonder how many there are. Uh, Four ninety nine. I bet they're. Like, I bet it's three. We'll have to go look it up. Whoa. What the? VMC blade. Does it have a? It's got a swivel on it. That's a. Dude, talk about legit for the back of a jerk bait. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, that's what it says, multi-species modifications on crankbaits, swimbaits, spoons, jerkbaits, and more. Sweet. Size of number 8, 6, 4, and 2. So, uh, check that little I saw swim that. Jig. I saw that before. The VMC. Ringed? I wonder what the ring's for. Dude, the Tokyo rig. I'm going to do a video, uh, probably so it can, it's probably for a Tokyo rig, actually. Oh, yeah. If you go Maybe. to the. Yeah, yep. same deal. Uh, so this Pretty Tokyo cool. right here, I'm going to have a video coming out here. First off, guys, I'm still waiting on my truck to be fixed. I uh, apologize to those of you guys out there on YouTube. You're going to see a lot of at my table talking. Ooh, here we go. We got another. So I like this. That's pretty cool. Uh, we'll talk about. I think that's what Steven has. I'm uh, pretty sure that's the thing, Steven. Steven, if you're still in here, is this the uh Hey, Larry, what's head? up, buddy? Ride of the Master in the house. I'm pretty, sure, guys? I'm pretty sure that's scaly head. Coastas. Coastas. I want to ask you this. I want to ask people out there, who all has Coastas out there? Are they worth the money? Because I know people swear by them. Yep, those, see, that's what I thought. I thought it looked familiar, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm, in, I'm in the market right now. Uh, guys, I've been with... Uh, been it does used. say on here, though, Steven, it's the most unaccurate scale right here. <laughs> it says it, weigh, it adds four pounds. Hold on a minute. It owes up to 50 pounds for your fish. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've been using a connect scale guys since, I love since the very first thing right and a cool thing about the connect scale is is that it keeps track on your phone and it's bluetooth and all that stuff so personally <laughs> i don't call fish that much the places i fish if you catch five fish you are doing work especially yeah. five keepers so there's very few times that i have to actually call so the other day at st Clair, i found out that you know the 
Connect scale is an amazing product, guys. Uh, the scale is very, very accurate and all that stuff. But I was having to pull my phone out of my pocket that. and record all the weights and all that stuff on there. I was uh, you know, I was thinking of, you know, I was always in the back of my mind worried about dropping my phone in the water. <laughs> um, and again, I'm not knocking Connect scale. They got a great product, but. I found myself, and another thing, Mike, you know, you're not allowed to use any kind of technology as far as, like, on your phone in these BFL tournaments and stuff. So, um, one, because people think that you're um, you're trying to steal their spots or whatever if you're constantly pulling their phone out. Matter of fact, my boater was like, hey, what are you doing on your phone all the time? And I had to explain to him that my, my stuff was working with my phone. So, I think next time, uh, I think uh, I'm going to borrow Josh's, um, his Rapala touchscreen, which will allow you to keep track of all the... Uh, the numbers. The only issue is I see is that my TNH Marine call system has doesn't have numbers on it. It's just collars. So I'm gonna have to take a sharpie and write one through five on there. And I did realize the other day why I figured out why there's six call tags in a call tag system. One, in case there's a six fish limit. But two, if you're using a call beam, you need an extra one. Yeah. I didn't realize that <laughs> until I didn't have one. I left the other <laughs> one in my boat. I was so like, call beam. Oh crap. <laughs> So there's a lured uh, lock deep box. So Dude, that's we'll, what I'm talking about. We'll be having about. some of those before long, I guarantee it. Uh, Steven told me not to hate. <laughs> he said, well, get, get me get get me one when I come down. Yeah. Heck yeah, we're Austin going down fish Hensley, chicken. what's up, brother? Um, so yeah, this, so we, we were talking about that the other day. We actually talked about the guy who was who hooked us up with lure lock, which, by the way, I still absolutely love mine. Um, uh, yeah. That's but awesome they, um, they we were talking about a deep box. is like you could take – like for example, if you take these this product here, which I'm gonna to talk to you about, is a product that, or this is a bag of jackal yammy fish. Um, you can actually take this thing and fold the bottom of it and stick the bottom of it to that box, and you can actually go through these things like a like a file system, and then you could just open the bag and then get what you need and then zip it up, and it's still in that lure lock box, which I thought would be a phenomenal idea. Again, we'll get back to that in just a second. I'm yeah. sure you guys didn't see it. Tungsten, tight next tungsten. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Dollar. So that's a Rapala. Yeah, so there's your call tags. That's similar to the ones I got. I Those got. are similar to the ones I got, but mine doesn't have the yeah. letters in them. Scent lock. Marine Odor Destroyer. Dude, that's pretty cool. Is that like in your $250. box? $250. Oh. It's a rechargeable ozone generator. Destroys odors, bacteria, dust mites, mold, fungus. Off your odor. truck, garage, Perfect boat. truck, boat, garage, workshop, lean odor, fishy odors at home. Hmm. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, here's your yeah, Star Here's your Star That's the diesel, diesel. treatment. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder Maybe if it help an eco diesel run better. <laughs> it's got it. You can't hurt it. That's yeah. for sure. Strike King, Coopers. So here's the G Force TNH Marine the Gen Two system. Oh, so they so you can change the call. See, they don't have numbers on them though, but they look like they're hard. So you could probably put like stickers or something on there. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, plastic molding. That's pretty cool. Sixty bucks. Wally. Wally X. Every Yakima double haul. Whoa, I don't know that I trust that. That is kind of sketchy. <laughs> to me. I you know feel like I mean? it would be better if it was backwards. I guess you could probably put it on there either way, but I guess you'd be able to see if they fell he off. They gotta have a truck to use one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. I mean I got one out there, but I'm not sure that it's gonna help it out. Yeti. Load out go box. Two hundred fifty dollars for a clothing. Here we go. We're about done here. Afco is coming on strong, man. Uh, a lot of people I know are repping Afco like hundred dollars submergible Road. shorts. Is that like a is that a waterproof pocket for your phone? So I'm checking here. Yeah, waterproof submersible roll top pocket. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty cool. Now you, you, Props you on that. You could have used that. I could have used it. <laughs> Afco Women's Reaper Technical Fleece. There's a lot of Af and again, guys, you. A lot of the stuff you're not going to see, or a lot of the stuff is just stuff that they've released prior. The fish monkey. You're going to see a lot of stuff that's, that's not on here. This, that's an iCast. We're going to talk about one of the most hyped up products so far, and that's the Carl Lorant Hunt Lorant said only one truck, and that's a Ford. <laughs> you know what? To be honest with you, man, I used to give Fords a hard time. Um, but right now, they're a the number one rated towing yeah. truck out of the 1500 series uh, with that what is it, EcoBoost or whatever. I'm going to start wearing these fishing with you. There you go. But, yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been a GMC and, Sh and Chevy guy all my life. I actually uh, jumped. Actually, the very first car vehicle I ever owned was given to me by my mom. My stepdad was a Ford Explorer. 
Um, it got me where I needed to go, but that thing was a pile by the time I got done with it. Oh, um, no, that's the one I need. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm looking, but I looked the other day in GMC and, and – um, Chevy saying only one out of five right. vehicles that they produce after next year will be made in the U.S. The rest of them will be made in Mexico. So here's what we're going to talk about. So, all right, so Josh wants to talk about so, that. So, uh, Steven says my first car is – oh, yeah, I got you both beat. My first car was a 1986 Astro minivan. Yeah, it was it like – It shag and wagon across the front of with it. With, like, tubbed <laughs> wheels and stuff. Yeah, it, it was – Like a skateboard. It was awesome. had, like, 750 <laughs> speakers in it. Yeah, it would shake – house is going by so yeah let's, let's just let's just not so these top 100 here is the bass fishery the uh dennis loves 250 yeah it's Did I, you know I, if they only had a motor and uh but the, you know this right here guys is i'm gonna tell you this i've been fishing st Clair for like 13 years and when i first started going up there there weren't hardly nobody there they named the number one fishery in the country and everybody's up there which it is still to me it is so not knocking it but um, St. Lawrence has been named the best bass fishery in the nation, and which is awesome. I mean, if you guys see him. Uh, Sam Rayburn slipped from number one to number three. Yeah, and I'm trying to see. It's got the uh, last year's. Yeah, 26 pounds, six ounce. So well, that's a, the average weight of the entire 149 team field was 20.3 pounds. Which is, that? Oh, that's at St. That's Saint, yeah. Saint Lawrence. Uh, 26 six ounce limit of smallmouth was weighed in. However, most scientific statistic is the average weight. Um, Everybody had this 20. is college. I think this is the college series. Yeah. Uh, so six the winning pounds, team from uh, Sam Houston State averaged 24 four. Jeez, that's pretty good. That's that's, that's real pretty good. good. That's real good. So let me show you the top ten right here, and then we're going to get off here. These are in the whole country. Um, and what's cool about this guys is literally you're within. From our area, yeah, four or five of them, yeah, you know, uh, with a it, decent yeah, jump. Yeah. I mean, you'd have you got St. Lawrence, which is about eight hours, I'd say, seven, eight hours away. Gunnersville, seven, eight hours away. Uh, California's way too far to drive. Uh, <laughs> Chickamauga, clear. that's clear across the country, <laughs> yeah, that's, but Clear Lake's clear across the yeah, country, yeah, Clear Lake's clear across the country. Uh, Chickamauga, five hours, five and a half hours. Uh, Lake St. Clair, five and a half hours, and then Lake Erie, New York. Um, which we was up there real close week when I went to Lake uh, Chautauqua, and I wish we went up there, but the weather just wasn't cooperating, and you know just so. But it was pretty cool. So Stevens, I'm hour forty five from Gunnersville, so yeah. But you know, so guys, you have a chance to fish. I know uh, Dennis and Tyler are getting ready to head back up to Lake Erie. I've been telling. Tyler, I was like, listen, you you need to go north. You know, north fishing's awesome. Yeah, I saw some pictures they posted. And I think they're addicted. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they're going back up tomorrow. Two weeks in a row, so, yeah. So. Yeah, so I guarantee you they're addicted to it. But, guys, if you live close to these lakes, go hit them. You know, I mean, what's the worst thing to do? You know, just spend time on them. Um, here's the northeast, obviously. There's no really small lakes. Most of these lakes you see here are pretty big. Michigan's. Yeti whisperer out there, brother. Sorry, my live chat was screwed up. Just it just uh, yeah, came man. through here on on uh, YouTube. Yeah, he actually, says, "What's up from Texas?" But thanks for tuning in. Tuning in there. Uh, so here's like I went to it was like Chautauqua, New York. That's 23. In yeah, the Chautauqua. You know, so that's not the country. Winnipesaukee, Lake Winnipesaukee. Atomic River. Atomic, yeah, that's yeah. about that's that's about 12 and hours. And Lake from Cumberland. Here. I seen somebody comment earlier. Lake Cumberland made it. Wow. Um. He said, Stephen said, the worst thing you can do is catch a 10-pound fish. Yeah, I guarantee it. Whatever, Stephen. We're not talking anymore. You got, hey, man, did you catch any fish out there in uh, Lake Erie when you guys went? I see you say you just got there. Uh, so, got Kentucky back. Lake's still top 25. So, um, look at this. California, 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 California. I don't think there's any other lakes besides. Did the, what was the, the reservoir out there that was so huge for spotted right bass? Here. Don Pedro? No. Uh, no, I can't. I don't okay, even know if I made it. I doubt it. It was they had. It's where they caught like the giant um, spotted bass. Like oh, the, the state, the world record has come out of there. Two actually come out of there. Let's look uh, it up. The guy who owns um, Pal Fishing Rods. He actually had the IGFA world record spot of bass, and it was broke the very next year, and then it was broke the very next year after that. Let's get back over here on yeah. us for just a second. Guys, while he's looking that stuff up, 
Again, we're talking about stuff that you're going to see at ICAST. First and foremost, I'm going to talk to you guys about Tim, uh, world record 10.3. Yeah, there's a guy who's no, a, has 11.2. Cody Meyer got it. He's a pro guy. But it was at uh, Buller's Bar. At the God, look what a toad. Yeah, so we'll bring this over so you guys can Check see it. This is what out. I was talking about. This is uh, look for real. Cody Meyer. You guys have seen him on weighs, MLF. Weighs 11 pounds. <laughs> it's 14 inches long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Caught it on an Ed rig. Yeah. Well, that's a better picture. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, right, here you go. Here's This brings it into perspective. Yeah. That's a toad. That's awesome. I don't see. But I'm gonna see how long it was. Wow! Look at that. It wouldn't fit in my life, well, I don't think. <laughs> but there was there was a state record cut out of there three years in a row. I'm pretty sure. So, guys, one thing I want to talk to you guys about: if you guys are just um, getting into the Ned Rig game, uh, Z-Man makes some awesome TRD Ned Rig worms. Um, but these these are a product made by Jackal, and they're a finesse worm. These are called a yammy fish. And the difference between these and the Z-Man, one, they're not as stretchy. Two, these things are more dense than the Z-Man, so you can cast these things a lot farther, and they sink way differently than the, than the Z-Man. So if you're into throwing, this is actually a red cola. Um, this is one of my favorite Coca -Cola? Ned Riggs. No, it's not Coca-Cola. <laughs> uh, so that's a yammy fish. And here's something else that I'm excited to try. I just got these in the other day. Um, this is a brand-new collar for uh, this year. And it's going to be tough to see, but this is a 2.8-inch swim bait made by Jackal. Rhythm Wave, to show you guys, if you guys are big into drop shotting, um, this is my absolute favorite drop shot bait on the planet. This is a Jackal cross tail shad, um, and it's probably really tough to see, but this is in green pumpkin pepper, I believe. Sure is green pumpkin pecker. Pecker? Pepper? <laughs> That's a weird collar, yeah. Tyler. <laughs> uh, so these things are, uh, are really nice. They have... The tails of them are are in a cross pattern, and you're not going to be able to see that. I'm sorry, but um, it has a lot of action in the water. These things are absolutely salty. I'm sure you guys can see it on my fingers. Um, they're absolutely they're awesome, man. If you like drop shotting, you owe it to yourself to pick up some of those. Um, and that's the Yammy Fish by Jackal, the three or 2.8 inch swim bait made by Jackal. <laughs> that is a Rhythm Wave and the Crosstail Shad. Jeffrey Sharp, do the Jackal Ned Rigs float like the Z-Man brand? Um, to be honest with you, I don't even know. Uh, that's give a very a good water. question. Um, yeah, give me give me a cup of water. I'll be right back. Let's find yeah. out. Yeah. I doubt it, though, because they're pretty dense. Live testing right here. We'll find out. So while he's going, um, we're uh, – he is – Tyler's, you know, we'll be fishing hopefully for long. He's going up back up to – uh, Lake St. Clair for BFL, I think July 13th. Uh, I'm, uh, I need a boat. <laughs> so I'm uh, pretty close to getting a boat. Uh, I think I've decided on one. Uh, Tyler actually told me about another one today, so I'm maybe contemplating it. But um, can't wait to get a boat. It's been boring without a boat. Never thought it would be. I miss my Stratus, so I'm not going to say here and tell you I don't because I love that boat. It was an awesome boat. So, But uh, I... Uh, I wish that uh, it was easier to find a boat that you wanted, but, man, the prices are just crazy. And I've been patient this long, so I'm going to wait. But like my dad said, if you guys have a prop, <laughs> he's looking for a night. He thinks it's a 19 by 21 in pitch prop. It's for a little yacht. That's what I call it, the little small yacht. Um, baby yacht. Yeah, a baby yacht. You guys, if you guys got one, hook him up, message us or whatever. Uh, Tyler's. Maybe so. So we know the Nedrick floats though. Yeah, so you guys can't see me. Alright, so live testing right here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with they probably do not, just for the simple fact that go ahead and open that one up. Um, because they are very, very dense. They have a lot of salt in it, so um, by the way, guys, uh, this is a Rheingeist Brewery glass, and I apologize for the water, but you, well, I figure it's fitting we use the Ohio here. So go ahead and drop <laughs> her in there, Josh. Let's find out. So first and foremost, do they float? Nope. No. Are they, I wish they said it doesn't stand up. I don't know. I can't, I can't even reach it without getting water <laughs> all over my hand. Here, use the ink pen. Use the... I just put just enough water in it. 
So let's let's do this. Let's turn it sideways and see what happens. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah. Well, I it's think getting it's getting stuck. Getting stuck. <laughs> <laughs> they are not going to float. Nope. No floaty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so no, the Emmy fish do not float. Um, so could give you a different approach to the Ned rig, whereas uh, you know it could stay right on the bottom. Speaking of Ned Rig, before we get into one of the most anticipated things about this entire um, episode is going to be the Lowrance uh, Ghost Trolling Motor we're going to talk about. show you guys a, a teaser video from there. I fished last weekend, or two weekends ago, at St. We'll Lake St. Clair. later. <laughs> yeah. Stuck. Lake St. Clair. In uh, the Teenage Marine BFL Michigan <laughs> Division, Kyle and I went up. We stayed, I, like I said, we stayed at his house, and then I drove. we drove up Thursday morning, fished all day Thursday. Absolutely miserable. <laughs> it's weird. You get above Columbus, and every hour you go north, it just keeps getting colder and colder and colder. Like the on Thursday when we got there, the water or the air temperature was like 64 degrees when we put the boat in the water at 6.30 in the morning, raining. Actually, it was really nice until about 7.30 in the morning, and then it started <laughs> spitting rain, and it rained until we just couldn't stand it anymore, man. It like We found our our deal was that we know Josh and I have been there several times. He's been there way longer than I have. But we found some spots where I know that you can go pretty much any time, anywhere, any bait, you're going to catch fish. All right, so one thing that we were looking for is that we weren't looking for that 18 pound limit we weren't looking for that 15 pound limit you can go and catch all day long you can catch three pounders and one you know there's about 10 different spots that we have on the lake that you can go there and catch three pounders all day long as many as you want to catch well that's not going to win a tournament especially with all the hammers that fish in that bfl I'm division you, up yeah. there they just freaking smoke fish um so we fished all new water we went all the way up we went probably seven miles up the st Clair river um and the water temperature the water temperature up there was 63 degrees water wow. temperature which is crazy you know you go to Yatesville right now i bet it's close to 90 easy yeah uh, uh, so we're up I, in there we never got bit i know the golf was 90 degrees when i was down there last week the yeah beach. so i mean it's the further you go south the hotter it gets obviously but so we, we fished some new water found some new baits uh i fished with a fellow named randy rousey um randy ramsey, ramsey. i'm sorry randy ramsey uh, and the dude absolutely is a, he's a hammer. Uh, he's fished the tour a couple of years. He made a hundred thousand dollars on a BFL or on the FLW circuit, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, so we head over to the Northern lands. We went, so Saturday, two, last Saturday was the very first day bass season opened for the Canadian waters. Um, just to give you an idea, I couldn't imagine being a pro fisherman and have to pay all the money that they do. Um, and here's why. Um, entry fee as a co-angler for the BFL is 150 bucks. I had $100 in a hotel room for, for two nights, Thursday night, Friday night, and then we come home Saturday. So two nights, $100 a piece for a hotel room. I pitched in on fuel for, for Kyle's boat when we were pre-fishing. Uh, I gave Randy like 40 bucks for fuel after it was over. I had $175 in fishing licenses. Hundred dollars for Canada, seventy-five bucks for the Michigan for the year because of the Michigan division we fish. St. Clair three times, the Detroit River twice. Guys, if you're looking for a way to get into fishing, especially as a co angler and you don't mind traveling, the Michigan division is pretty stellar this year. Yeah. Uh the only thing I don't like about it is that the regional is at Kentucky Lake. So you go to <laughs> up these northern way and you just smash fish every you know. If you don't have 20 pounds, you might as well. Like this next tournament, they're projecting a 30 pound bag to be weighed in. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, which is crazy. But if you don't have 20 pounds, you, you might as well just turn your fish loose. It's pretty crazy. But so we found, found some fish. Fish were anywhere from 6 to 12 feet of water. They weren't any deeper than that. It was just like, and most fish were actually bedding still. Um, and they're projecting them still be on the beds when we get back there in a couple of weeks. Um, I caught most of my fish on a pink bubblegum collared ned rig uh a z-man trd uh green pumpkin head that we poured here a quarter ounce i like a heavier light wet or weight because i want to fill the bottom um i used a uh, nrx um, three powered spinning rod with a saris uh reel on it the whole time pretty much never left my hands i took eight rods with me in his boat i literally used two <laughs> um three actually i used a drop shot 
I threw a 1.5 and caught some of the biggest fish I caught all week on 1.5 and, and a, on a sexy shad 1.5. I just tied it on. I was like, this looks pretty good. They were spitting up emerald chiners, guys. So I, I caught a fish. This, this fish spits up these emerald chiners all over Kyle's boat. So I immediately tie on a sexy shad 1.5, three casts later, caught a four pounder. So we left the spot. I used that Ned rig to catch. Uh, I, I had about 17 pound in the live whale, five fish in the first, like I'm talking 20 minutes of the tournament. I had 17 pounds in the live whale, which is crazy. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so we were moving around trying to find some bigger fish. As Randy said, same as I did, four pounders is what you got to have to win the tournament or even get in the money. Um, so we went finding some bigger fish. I started throwing that 1.5. We were in six to eight foot of water, so it was perfect. Um, here's the thing, guys. They were they were smashing top water. I've never seen so many smallmouth hitting so many top water baits in my life. But the mayflies are stupid thick up there. Yeah. I don't know if you guys saw the the <laughs> photo of the mayfly. See so if you can find that photo of the mayfly on Long Lake Erie. Okay. Um, but the mayfly hatch up there. They should be called June flies this year because they're they're yeah. stupid thick up there. But it was an amazing time. I caught most of my fish on a pink Ned rig, which you wouldn't think. Um, water was was fairly clear. Um, I ended up having 18, almost 19 pounds, 18 pounds, 14 ounces. And I finished 13th out of 118 people on the co-angler side, so I was really proud of that. Um, and we're going back up here in a couple weeks to compete in the second one. Um, and... And I can't wait, man. It's a it's a good time. So if you if you've never been there, yep, it's a lake there. Go. All right, so let's let's pull this up. So hopefully you guys can see this. This Buried is a by couple bugs. Oh, I clicked on it. I don't know what's done. It maybe making it bigger. Maybe it's a video. <coughs> there you go. So so you can see like tire <laughs> tracks through them, which yeah. is crazy. Uh, got an old Ford Taurus over there, and That's I don't know what the, the, the left one, the left one is a Taurus. Thank you. Yeah. So you can see, I mean, that is crazy. <laughs> that is. I don't know if there's any more here. Nah. nah. That's, yeah. That's what's show the millions of flying in skies of Western Lake. That's wow. the. Wow, it's showing up on the Doppler radar yeah. because it's the, the actual uh, Mayfly hatch, which is crazy. <laughs> but we were catching a man. It was. I can't wait till we go up here in a couple of weeks. We're having fun. I'm hoping to have my truck fixed by then. I don't think it's going to happen, but I was hoping to pull my boat up and do some pre-fishing on Misty. Um, but, again, that's neither here nor there. I've kind of gotten used to being disappointed by Fiat Chrysler. So we're working on it, I'm trying to get my truck fixed. I think they're going to try to help me out, but I have to wait until the warranty comes through. But without further ado, um, so that was my experience up there up north at uh, St. Clair for the Michigan Division BFL. Guys, if you guys want to do some fun fishing, today was the last day to link. Um, here's something I want to talk to you guys about really quick before we move on to the ghost trolling motor, and that is um, I I had reservations about getting uh, being a part of the um, BFLs or anything bigger, you know, because those are really considered pro tournaments. Uh, I don't consider myself to be a pro. I fish co-angler. Uh, and if you're wondering why I fish co-angler instead of a uh, pro, because I have my own boat, um, the, the reasons are simple. One, um, it's cheaper on me. I'm a high school teacher by trade, so I don't have all that money to throw around. I don't have a lot of sponsors and stuff that are paying me to fish. So, um, you know, we're going to, um, you know, I'm going to do the best I can to get myself in these in these situations to catch fish and do well on what I need to do and eventually work myself into that pro side and hopefully I can camp. But the biggest reason I don't fish as a pro, uh, they call the boaters pros, the reason I don't fish with my own boat is, one, if I would do really well and I make it to the regional, I get three months off in the summer as a high school teacher, and they frown upon me taking time off when we're actually back in school. It, it hurts the students, and it hurts uh, you know me as a teacher. So I try not to do that. I can take like a day off on a Friday and drive down and fish a tournament and come back Sunday. That's no big deal. Um, I don't want to handcuff my co-angler that has worked really hard all year to get where they're at and, uh, and you know, just get in my boat and have no clue what I'm doing as far as the lake because I could pre-fish it. Um, so that's why I don't fish as a, as a boater on the BFLs. But I would say if you're interested in doing do it, guys. The, it's easy to do. It's fun to do, especially as a co-angler. You fish as a co-angler until you get to where you're comfortable and move over to the pro side. Um, 
so one of those things, I just posted a video today on YouTube. I'm not going to talk about it much here because you can go over there and check it out. Uh, basically a product that's called the um, Calco's Fishing Rod Mule. Again, I'm not sponsored by the company. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. They have no clue who I am. They are, they've created a product called the Rod Mule, which is making my job easier as a co-angler. You can put 10 rods in one bundle and put them over your shoulder and carry them, which is, it is freaking awesome, dude. Go out and check it out. I just released a video. There it is. So, uh, Carl, he said he didn't have Luna prop. He's on a dark member side. We'll check it out in the morning. Appreciate that, Carl. Uh, Brian Skur said, a good thing you stayed away from uh, Walpaw Island. That's another license you got to have. Yeah, we did. Uh, we and knew then, that. Uh, he also said you can take your kids on a field trip for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Steven says bubble gum is a killer for small jaws. Dude, they love it. Uh, and <clears throat> the guy that Randy was like, it's funny though. It always works out this way because I bought one bag of them. You know, like normally I buy like, you know, I, like jackal baits. I order them by the cases, I think. You know, I called Drew up like I need, you know, like the other day. Oh, I tell you what, I ordered – I ordered, I ordered 400 and some dollars worth of baits and probably 300 of them were jackal baits. Um, so I stock up when I get them. But um, speaking of which, uh, I tried to get some uh, information out of him about Shimano iCast. He's tight-lipped as ever. Uh, they Shimano takes that stuff super serious. So uh, check back on my Instagram up on this uh, on another line. You're going to see some new stuff coming from Shimano here soon. But um, without further ado, do we're going to talk about what I'm most interested in? But you were talking about the oh, you only sorry, bought one lost. bag. I'm sorry, you only bought one bag of bags. oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah. All right, sorry, got, <laughs> I got sidetracked I'm looking up here, seeing 15 different things we're yeah. doing. All right, so anyway, <laughs> back to my story. I only bought one bag of bait, so I bought one bag of uh bubblegum TRD worms. Started catching them when me and Kyle were on up there pre fishing, just left the thing on very like the third cast, right? So I just threw it off the side of the boat, didn't want to catch anything on the first fish because on the first cast, because you can't, right? If you catch one on the first cast, if you're superstitious, then you're not going to catch any fish the rest of the day. So I don't, I'm not saying I'm superstitious, I'm just saying that I don't want, I want to take everything out of my, out of the deal. I'm not superstitious, but I'm superstitious. So anyway, I didn't catch one on the first cast, third cast, catch one four and a half pounds, the very first fish I catch on a bubble gum TRD and Ed rig. <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I literally catch three or four in a row, big ones. I'm talking toads. Randy's like, got any more of those baits? <laughs> I said, I got four more, bud. <laughs> he said, I was afraid of that. So, so I threw him one, and he caught some fish on it. It was all, all well to end well. So sorry about getting you know squirreled out there and, and forgetting my water. I was at. So, said, got any more of them? Yeah, got any more? No. Of, no. Yeah, 20 bucks a piece push them in your pocket <laughs> yeah so again without further ado one of the things that we're going to talk about that i'm most interested in is the lawrence trolling motor that's coming out and they've been very very tight-lipped about yes, it yes carl no bananas on the boat no bananas nope no bananas hey finn fishing what's up brother yeah. um i, I right. called you brother i hope you're a dude um <laughs> could be a lady so apologize if you are not thanks for tuning in here we go um so anyway New from Lawrence this year. If you guys have never heard about this, this is the Lawrence Ghost. I didn't know what it was called until they released a video eight hours ago today talking about the Lawrence Ghost. It was just the trolling motor, the Lawrence new from Lawrence. There's been several people that have been testing it. Mike Iaconelli is one of them. Uh, there's several people that have been testing this product. Um, I'm up in the air about it, guys. I'm a Minn Kota guy through and through. I love my Minn Kota. I have a uh, Altrex right now. Um, not I, I, I have no. I have a um, Fortrex. Fortrex. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> uh, I have a Fortrex. I'm going to be buying an Altrex soon. Uh, so did that guy have an Altrex? Oh, absolutely, dude. And I'm gonna talk, that was one of the biggest things for us. And this is why I this thing is going to have to be super impressive for me to buy in. Here's why. First off, you guys know I'm a Hummingbird guy, um, and you guys also know that Minn Kota owns Hummingbird. They're in the same company. Um, you know, the thing about it is I used to like uh, Motor Guide. Kyle bought Motor Guides, all of his stuff. Guys, man, they have absolutely been crap for Kyle. He's had terrible luck with them, man. Like, it busts cables every time he's out. It's just terrible. Um, so he's looking at a Minn Kota too, but one of the reasons that I think that they're going to have to really do something with his trolling motor is that the Altrex is – it is a phenomenal package, man. Like you're getting that GPS waypoint activity that you would get on like the, the Altera that you had. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have the auto stow deploy that you have on the Altera. That's the only difference. I really didn't like. I mean, I like that, but I didn't. 
it was kind of slow uh, and the electronic, and that's why. So this is the same way. This I think you know. Don't hold me to it because there's not a lot of information, but I think this has the uh, electronic um, steering on it. Um, you'll see it here in just a minute, but it, it's so the head doesn't turn like the Altrex does. But one of the biggest things about Saturday when we were fishing at Lake St. Clair, uh, wind, wind was ripping, probably 15 mile an hour, probably two to three foot chop when we first got out to where we were fishing. He pulled up on a rock pile, spot locked us down, and we literally sat there and made the same cast and crushed on bass until they stopped biting. We would go to the next rock pile. He would spot lock us down. We'd sit there and just crush on those fish's head until they stopped biting, and then we would go to the next rock pile. It was literally the coolest thing ever. Like normally, like for me, I would go past it, let the wind blow us through it. We'd catch one or two. We'd have the big motor back up. No. We got to this point, he hit the button, and we stayed right there. I mean, like literally, I had this one landmark on the on the bank that I was throwing at every time and catching fish, and we never moved. Hmm. It was a cool thing. That's so cool. That's why I think that they're going to have to really do some stuff here from Laurent. So we're going to unmute this here. Let me uh, pull this up. We'll get Josh to play this. Hopefully you guys can hear it. Being quiet is essential in uh, them not knowing you're there. It's my job to be as quiet as possible, to be as real as possible, and to sneak up on that fish to get that fish to bite. If they don't know you're there, they're easier to catch. The thing that I love the most is that the head doesn't rotate. So now the head's gonna stay still and you don't have that winding back and forth. I'm so excited to be able to have that much power and speed yet be very, very quiet. You can't even tell that you're turning that trolling motor. It's just so quiet, so responsive, so powerful. So having a trolling motor that's super quiet and one that blends in with the environment, that's gonna help me catch more fish. There it is. We'll have Josh pull up the, the other video that they posted yesterday um, or the other day on it as well. Um, and so there's very little out there about this product, guys. It's literally coming out. I think it's that one right there. So let's get him. We'll let him pull it up and we'll show it too. Um, let's, let's, let's get they didn't just start with a trolling motor. They started from the very tip of it to the very top of it and built a brand new product. When you put it down in the water, it's going to handle abuse, it's going to work, and it's going to get me through a long fishing day. That's, uh, that's important. It looks like a tank. It looks like the sturdiest made trolling motor I've ever seen. This thing went straight through the thickest stuff that I would ever fish in my entire life. It didn't bog down at all. It just cut right through that grass. I tear things up. I don't think I can tear that one up. I'm amazed at something that is so simple so many small details that they've thought from the top to the bottom, from the beginning to the end of this trolling motor, they are all in it. You will be blown away like I am. Pause that. We'll, we'll see. We'll actually, we'll just get back. All right. So, you guys see that. If you guys are at ICAST or at Booth 3618, go over and stop and check that trolling motor out. Report back to us. See what you say. So if you look at those videos, guys, there's one part of those videos that the head turn. It looks to me like the head turns 360 degrees. Like, go back to the very first one. I have it muted, so just go back. And I want to get to this one part. And I could be wrong. I'll go ahead and skip through it. So there's... There's a part where he's turning the... <laughs> I like what Carl said. Carl said, if quiet is so important, important then why do you have a hydro wave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, look, it's right. You can see the top of it right here. So, let me play this back. I could be wrong. We'll play well, it back here so you guys... There. So, yeah, but look. So, well, I didn't go all the way around. I just wonder... I because so, so, what happens is... So, we'll, we'll bring that up. So, go back and pause it, like, right in there where you can see... All right, so so if you guys can see right here, you can see the 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 uh, arrows pointing forward. That is the only thing that moves. We'll get Josh to play here in just a second, so you can see it moving. The head doesn't turn. I don't know if it's if it's servo driven. I don't know why it couldn't turn 360 degrees and like continue to go. You know what I mean? It's probably right. there's probably contacts that that has electricity going through it into the motor. I don't know. Again. 
So I, I've looked at, I don't know that I haven't seen that video yet. Oh yeah, let's watch that video. Let's uh, so start it over here. I'm not, I'm not seeing this video, guys. So it's got Lorenz live on it. <laughs> yeah, so it's. So again, guys, there's very little information out there about the L Lawrence Ghost, which, um, you know, like I said, I love Minn Kota trolling motors. I love my Fortrex. Um, it's only 24 volt. We were talking about it. If my battery charger was bad, which it's not, I was going to go ahead and bump up to the four bank because I eventually am going to buy a th third battery, have a 36 volt, 112, uh, all Trex on there with spot lock. It is an absolute it's a must if you want to be competitive, especially in the in the tournament world. Um, hmm. So I'm pretty excited. Like I said, Ishmael, they the got Edwin like Evers. I just wonder if KVD knew about that trolling motor because he's <laughs> still. I mean, he went to Lorant, you know, went from Lawrence to Humminbird and Minkota last year. So you know yeah, that stuff's got to be. If they put five thousand hours on the water, then it's got to have been a year plus in the making. So I'm sure he yeah. probably knew about it. Uh, but anyway, so what are you guys' thoughts about that trolling motor? You guys think it's going to be a game changer? You think it'll? Do you think it will outdo the Altrex? And my, my, I'm going to be honest with you. My personal opinion is that it there's it would have to be absolutely phenomenal to break away from what the Altera has or um, the Altrex has for Minn Kota. Um, I, I can't I can't wait to see a comparison. There's going to be a video of it soon. I would love to be able to make a comparison video. However. I'm not that high in the YouTube market yet. So I would say if you're going to see anybody doing something like that, you're going to see the Kevin Baxter's, a.k.a. Bateman of the world doing that, or um, somebody like Fluke Master or somebody in that nature. They'll, they'll have the opportunity to check, check those things out. So I want to pull up this video since we're done with that. We'll be Larry Slack sent that to me the other day. Yeah, I didn't know um, where it was at. Like St. Clair. And I want to get off here uh, before because we won't be on here much longer because it's getting close to our hour time. Actually, it's we're only right now twenty five. No, it's oh, not. It's, we're an hour, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I was gonna say hour nine minutes. I was like, man, yeah. no way. Yeah, that's a, the longest or shortest twenty five minutes ever. There was a video on. Uh, I'm obviously most of our f uh, fishing pages like I'm on about everyone. Like I just try to I join them all. Like everything comes up is all fishing. I was on the uh, Lake Saint Clair fishing page the other day. Um, it's a great guy. There's a bunch of good guys on there. And there was this video on there. And I guess this guy was at Lake St. Clair. He was arrested. I see, did see that uh, he was arrested. I don't think that has it on here. But he was intoxicated, obviously. Yeah, so and, we'll bring it over here so you can see it. And I'm going to want you to watch this video. I don't know what made this guy mad, obviously. This is a big boat, as you can be able to see in the background. <laughs> back there that's crazy man <laughs> but like why do you do that that's dude i tell you what one of one of the craziest things i think about up there seeing the uh the big lakes like that st Clair, erie ontario stuff <laughs> like that dude there are thousands of acres of water and you'll be in one fish you'll be in one spot fishing i swear to goodness there'll be somebody buzz the tower on you bud <laughs> 30 feet away from you and there's literally a thousand acres in any direction you want to go oh, yeah. and like here's my boat shoo, like waking me out i'm like really <laughs> well and that's what kind of dumb me over the top that last day we were up at st Clair like on that saturday it was just it was terrible like i mean I, the weather was just bad the wind was blowing out of the east and that's the worst one you can have up there and there was 50 million pleasure boaters and it got to the point that I'm like, I got waked out so bad. I was like, I'm done. Like, I'm just, I'm tired of finding it, you know, and that's what made it. That's when we decided to leave. But, you know, like Tyler says, man, give some people some room. 
don't don't be like that. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean it, and don't be that guy. Yeah, don't, don't be, be that, that guy, guy right there. You know, yeah, and, right. and like we've always said, like, and you guys have seen it. I've seen 150 videos of what they call weekend warriors putting their boats in the water, their trucks in. I guess there was <laughs> one at what Cave Run not too long ago. I don't know. I think it was one at Cave Run. Somebody had a picture of their boat. I mean, is, that, is there anybody that would like to try to back a Dodge in the water? <laughs> That's never done it before. Never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> but like. Be respectful. Like, don't get in a hurry, man. Like, I've always said, like, you know, just – I chill out and just – oh, well. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I get you. I, you know, but don't be like that. I mean, don't, like, run your boat up on some guy's oh, boat. That's like, crazy. that's his thing. That's crazy. He – uh Brian Skir says, try jigging the Detroit River when it's jammed and you thought you were in the wake zone. <laughs> you know, and, like – So, did you, have, so did, Brian, I guess you're up from up that way. I I'll think Kyle and I made a f- big faux pas the other day, and maybe you could tell us. Uh, f- f- I, it's the first time I've ever been up in the St. Clair River. Uh, when you go up past the St. Clair, we come in the shipping channel there up in the St. Clair River right past Firecracker. And you go up through there so far, and then it splits in three different arms. So you have the main arm and the other two arms. And we come down the far arm and come back out by Anchor Bay. Correct me if I'm wrong, but is that all no way? Because I'm pretty sure we blew people's doors off. And it was like no wake. Um, so if you guys are out there watching where we're at St. Clair two weeks ago, I'm sorry because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we ran through about four miles of no wake. Let's see. Let's just see if uh, night fishing. He says uh, it's in Windsor. He says night fishing is the worst. People leaving the lights on makes it hard to back up. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. No doubt on that one. Let me. Uh, a map of Lake St. Clair, no wake zones. Let's find out, Tyler. Well, shall we? Shall we find out? I do know there's a 200 foot around everywhere. So what is that? So, let's see. Is the that, yellow is no wake zone. So, yes. Is that the St. Clair River? Yeah. That's southern. That St. Clair River. That's the oh. bottom. So the yellow here. Again, you guys are. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Let's see here. So obviously it's 200 feet. And what I'm looking at here. Um, so that's 200, 600 foot roll. Vessels less than 26 foot in length, no wake. Speed within 200 feet of shoreline, doctor within the boundaries. Vessels 26 foot or graver, no no wake. No wake speed within 600, 600 feet, feet of shoreline. So I don't think, so, I think you're good. So this 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 right here is where we're coming out, that back, yeah, the top so, one. So the right here is, is no wake zone. At the end of it? Yeah, right there. So they were up in their walleye fishing. Here you go, that's a better picture. So I'm taking this as no wake zone right here. Yeah, so I guess we're all right. So what's the the orange? Is that just that's just the um, 200 foot rule. Oh, okay, so but that channel's not 200 foot wide, so it's probably all all <laughs> unless you're right in the center. Yeah. So this is no wake zone. So See, the, obviously this one's uh. Yeah. So. I would. I need to do some more research on it. Obviously, I've been in boating since I was a little kid, but I always thought if it was no wake for the entire channel, then there would be multiple buoys going across the entire channel. However, there were just one, and there's one. If you guys are out there and, and have um, been at Grayson lately, if you go up into uh, Clifty Creek, right there by Clifty Creek Bridge, there's one single no wake zone buoy right by one of the bridge pylons. And it used to be right there next to the actual little boat ramp that's there. And those are gone, but there's one no-wake zone buoy right in the center of that channel. I'm going to have to get a hold of the DNR and find out what's up with that. Because I've been going in there like super slow, no-wake, and it's a, it's an uber long. You know, you get back in there so far, it definitely is no-wake. But So this right here is no-wake. Is that where you guys at? This little part right here? I'm going to guess, yeah. Then, yeah, that's no-wake through there. Yeah, so... There's so the red is no way. Well, there's a there's a marina in there somewhere. There's like a big marina. I don't know where it would be. So the middle channel. So obviously this is the one I hear. It's bigger detail. 
Yeah. St. Clair Flat. So this right here, if you where he was oh, at. No, we were, I'm talking about like running from here all the way down. Oh, the, no, that's a 200-foot roll, it says. Yeah, but like I said, it's not 200 feet. It's no way it's 200 feet wide. It might be. And some parts of it are probably 100 yards wide, so it would be 300 feet. So it says uh, vessels less than 26 foot in length, no wake speed within 200 feet of shoreline, docked or pierhead within boundaries. Same so you're good. I think if the way I read that, then I think you're good. Yeah. So maybe you want that guy. Yes. But <laughs> but if you're talking about 200 feet from a shoreline, wouldn't it have to be it would have to be 500 feet wide, right, for you to be able to run in the middle? Well, not or, necessarily. If it was 200. Boat, boat's eight foot wide. Yeah. So if it's 408 feet, you're, you're good. good. <laughs> as long as you stay right dead center. Yeah, so we're good. There's up there people flipping us off and stuff that were walleye fishing. We were blowing their doors off. So anyway. So, guys, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We've been here an hour and 18 minutes talking about new ICAST products. If you guys are just joining us, you go back and watch it all and see the stuff that they have released to Bassmaster Magazine. We actually talked about the Ghost trolling motor by Lawrence. I will be giving you guys updates as I get them through iCast for Shimano, G Loomis, Jackal, Power Pro, um, and now Sportco Marketing, my representatives through all that stuff, is now repping the Stormer brand. So I will be bringing you guys updates from all that as you see it coming through on iCast, and you guys will get my opinion of it again. What I'm going to do is for the next two or three minutes, what I'd like you guys to do actually when we're actually watching the exit video here. Um, again, I've started this series on YouTube talking about back to the basics. I don't care if you're a pro. I don't care whatever. If you consider yourself a pro, drop a comment below of a pro or of a maybe a technique or a fishing technique that you think would be uh, beneficial for somebody to learn if they were just starting out. I have a drop shot tying technique. I have a Texas rig technique that I've just talked about and posted those videos soon. Um, so if you can think of some other stuff that you think that is, it, you know, will help brand new fishermen into the bass fishing world, cat fishing world, I don't care what kind of fishing it is. If I can get to it, I will write, shoot the video. Um, and we will, um, you know, we'll be seeing you. But if you guys haven't subscribed to us on YouTube, same deal, at On Another Line on YouTube. We're uh, almost, uh, we're a little over 1,100 subscribers right now. Uh, which I want to thank each and every one of you guys that are out there supporting me. means a ton. I can't wait to see what's coming down the pike. But without further ado, I want to <laughs> say thank you for tuning in to this yep. episode of On Another Line. My name is Tyler Waller. And I'm Josh Bryant. Until next time, guys, lean on them, and we will see you next time. Take care, guys. Full of Bass Pro, a couple rods and a flat bottom boat. Hook it up to the truck, got a hot date with a fishing hole. Got a nice chest, well it's empty right now. Grab a 30 pack, fill it up, I sit down. Back the boat, down the ramp, ease her out through the no way zone. Well there ain't no better way on a Saturday to drift away from reality. Drive your night. Another time, right now.